Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In today's sermon, we explore the profound topic of the ministry of the Holy Ghost to man. The Holy Ghost awakens us to the life of God. The Holy Ghost serves as the divine spark that awakens us to the abundant life that God offers. He transforms us through His power. The Holy Ghost transforms our hearts, molding us into the image of Christ. He renews our mind. The Holy Ghost renews our minds, aligning our thoughts with God's truth and wisdom. He sanctifies us. Through sanctification, the Holy Ghost sets us apart for God's purposes, empowering us to live holy and righteous lives. He kills our sinful appetites. The Holy Ghost enables us to crucify the flesh, putting to death our sinful desires and empowering us to live victoriously. May we continually yield to the ministry of the Holy Ghost, allowing His transformative power to work within us. Sit down, sit down so we can proceed. It's difficult for me to teach about the Holy Ghost. You'll lose your service. There are two things I'm eternally grateful to God for. Many things, but two stands out. Number one is eternal life. Number two is the gift of the Holy Spirit. My God, what would we have done without it? Many things, but these two. Eternal life, gift of the Holy Ghost, and then if you want to add righteousness the ability to stand before God he's the helper he's the counselor counselor there are many strategic decisions you want to take trust me your brain is not built for it the Bible says it's not given to man that walketh to order his step you have not lived before this is your first life and this is the only one how can you be sure the decisions you make now is right except as he comes to whisper to your heart most of the steps you took that landed you where you are you know they came to you intuitively it was the holy ghost that whispered to you don't go left take right and when you check your life you find levels of precision that is beyond a study decision making process because it's your counselor this is why we can't do without the holy ghost He's your intercessor. There are many things you can't pray about. Imagine the way the, the book of Romans 8.26 puts it. He said, we don't know what to pray for. That's one. And then number two, as we ought. That means even if you know what to pray for, you don't know the extent to pray it. That's why you have the Holy Ghost. Somebody is praying to pass an interview. He doesn't know there's an accident waiting for him on the way. You don't know. Your prayer point is wrong. That means your problem that morning is not the interview. It's how to survive 8.15. Because there's an accident on a junction by 8.15. Only the Holy Ghost can go beyond time. So the ones you didn't pray for is the one that prays them. He said, him that searcheth the mind of God, he maketh intercessions for us according to the will of God. The one who prays the accurate prayer is the Spirit. He's our intercessor. He's our advocate. He's the one that stands in our defense. Even when we err, we are not even aware of it. He's already raising the defense. Oh! There are activities going on on your behalf. Have faith in God, sir. Have faith in God. What is happening in your advantage? Is more than what you can know in a lifetime. So much is happening for you. Have faith. See, when you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, the devil can't kill me. I'm too surrounded. You have too many advantages. This is why you must be careful what you say. Don't open the door to the devil. He said, give me no place to the devil. Somebody wakes up, I'm finished. No, we don't finish. Because even when we don't know what to do, there's an advocate. There's an intercessor. There's a counselor. We are not finished. Every 
every time you say you are finished you are telling the Holy Ghost I don't need your service anymore instead of saying I am finished say Lord have mercy so that the one who knows more than you will go to work our works our, our words can limit angels and the Holy Ghost too much is happening on your account that you are not aware of that's why you must trust God and trust him with the whole of your heart he said he is faithful that has called us him that called it is faithful and he has put a lot of infrastructures in place to make sure that you don't waste he said all that you have given to me none is wasted except the son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled I'm in the hand of God I'm engraved in his palms the hairs of my head they are numbered be bold and apart from that is your strength now when human strength fails the strength of God kicks in because the Holy Ghost is there and it's also your standby when nothing works he's there and trust me there will be a day when you will shut down that's the day you cross to eternity even that day the Holy Ghost will show up and tell you it's not over absence from the body is presence with the Lord I know the road beyond time that's the assurance we have as believers we hail you. Ah. We hail you. We hail you. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you. We hail you. We hail you. We hail you. meditate on these teachings it's not about the emotions you feel now let these things become the substance of your faith as you think on them he will open up deeper layers the Bible said we are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved God took time when he walked to prepare us for destiny and trust me what is working for you is bigger than you he said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world what is working with you is bigger than both you and the world you live in but you must understand how to yield to God the fourth ministry of the Holy Ghost is the empowerment ministry as he's helping you a point comes when he begins to enable you to become the help for others and there are four things he does here number one he comes to validate all your claims about God Luke 24 49 tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power tarry until you are endued with power from on high Acts chapter 1 verse 8 not many days from now you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power and you shall become proof producers witnesses unto me so when we stand up and we say we can't fail the Holy Ghost will support that statement so that it doesn't come it doesn't fail when we stand up and we say Jesus heals so be healed the Holy Ghost will rise up to support it so that it doesn't fail if the Holy Ghost does not show up the scriptures cannot be validated so he came to validate our claims about God and scriptures number two that's the first way he empowers you so that the words of God you speak produce result number two he came to prosper us in kingdom advancement because kingdom advancement requires a lot of prosperity. Zacharias 117 said, Cry out loud, say, My kingdom through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. We have a, a crusade in Kuje this weekend. Millions are going. As in Dagawad Me said, crusade is like pouring water in basket. That's how money goes in crusade. And there's no return. The only return is souls that are won. Millions, millions salvation is free but preaching the gospel is highly expensive every time you want to advance kingdom you will need to be empowered he said in Deuteronomy 8 18 you shall remember the Lord your God it is him that giveth the power to get wealth to establish his covenant 
that he gave to your fathers even unto this day if the holy ghost does not show up you will not be empowered and this is not just financial empowerment you need miracles because men want to see proof all of the dimensions of empowerment require the holy you need strategy and intelligence to advance kingdom that's the holy ghost work in isaiah 32 verse 15 see the way the bible puts it when the spirit be poured upon us from on high he said the wilderness shall be turned to a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall be counted for a forest that's how the holy ghost works and look at the apostles few men afraid locked away in the upper room out of fear the bible said in acts 2 1 4 when the day of pentecost was fully come suddenly they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind the holy ghost descended and cloven tongues as of fire rested on their head suddenly they stood up strength had come they stepped out peter preached acts 2 37 to 30, 38 immediately three thousand was added to the church acts 4 verse 4 he preached five thousand was added to the church a point came individuals started taking cities acts 8 verse 1 to 5 philip went to samaria he preached christ there the city so you see that vulnerable fearful dejected men who seemingly were hopeless when the holy ghost showed up they became giants until today the testimonies they bore is still what is helping us to navigate life that's how he works hear me your disadvantage can't stop you there is one who qualifies you your weaknesses can't disqualify you there is one who qualifies you it is the holy spirit when he comes he will qualify you for kingdom advancement don't bother i can't speak i don't have money those are secondary who is sustaining you if the holy ghost is the one then those things don't count my business will fail my business will fail i don't know anybody i don't have capital that is secondary allow the holy ghost take center stage and see the wisdom that will bring capital see the strategic connection that will bring men that you don't know I looked at my life recently I just shook my head I said this God eh, follow him as I'm talking to you now there are many military generals they are just a phone call away these are senior men in society military generals some of them come to my house rare admirers please let's hold hands and pray together where do I know them from if not by the Holy Ghost one was posted to Lagos to head a division there recently a naval officer a rare admirer he said please i want you to come to lagos and dedicate my office who am i is it vice chancellors we are supposed to have a crusade in ghana they frustrated my friend until one week to crusade they say meeting will hold again when he called me say please if you have any string pull it now i said give me five minutes i caught somebody the person picked from greece and called the vice chancellor of the university he just landed london he was on his way to boston in five minutes even the program they have there on saturday they say shift it to sunday i'm not even a Ghanaian. that's the holy spirit in all humility he will exhort you because he's the one that lifted the beggar from the dunghill to establish you among princes so that you inherit thrones there are kings that give me honorarium kings i'm not talking oh uh, kings the other day i was in a damawa state a king showed up Pe these are people people beg please give us place to do crusade he said please i want to sow a seed and they play the message in the palace do you know how many preachers are there see follow the holy ghost so he will decorate your life you will wonder Told you you don't know anybody you know the one that knows everybody the heart of kings and the hands of god he turns it wherever he wants i don't want to call names because see some things are better confidential i was on a flight i saw a former chief of defense staff they said in bamenda they've not had any conference there since 2016 because of us they extended the time for coffee first they shut down by seven but they say now the whole area people are free to move around till 8 30. when we came to yaounde the whole bill two people stood up and paid all 
You can't come to our country to bless us and you spend your money. Two people paid for the whole bill. From billboard to auditorium to F, they paid the whole bill. We only paid for our flight and few logistics. If you follow him, he will change your story. And it's not because we are preachers, even in your business. I just prayed for my friend who came from South Africa to start a business. That same night, the first person he met as he went to the hotel called people connected to the vice president. And instantly, what would have taken eight months has been perfected in two days because the Holy Ghost showed up. Who told you you are supposed to struggle? Give him time in your life and see him lift you from nowhere to become the envy of your generation. He prospers you. Number three, he causes us to prevail against contrary forces. Luke 4, 14, he returned in the power of the spirit. Matthew 4, 14 and 15, the land of Zabulu, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. See, nothing can withstand you if you allow the Holy Ghost demonstrating his power through your life. And finally, how does he strengthen you? He causes you to live a profitable life. Isaiah 32 verse 16, I quoted already, when the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, he said, even the wilderness can become a fruitful field. Do you know what wilderness is? <laughs> you need to see some. You will be shocked. The other day I was flying to Egypt. I passed through the desert, which is a type of a wilderness. When I saw the, the height of the dust and the dryness, that was death in itself. You will see white sand like like story building imagine you are flying at forty-one thousand feet above sea level it's not a small plane we were flying a dreamliner so they go as high as 41 42 thousand feet the sun looks as if it's close to you in fact if the plane bends if your if your heart is not help fear will hit you you will start imagining things let's not sink into this dust the, the mammoth nature of the dust and God said when the spirit is poured that level of dryness can become a fruitful field and it will not just be a fruitful field it can become a forest nothing can defeat you and I may go to declare over someone every crisis you are going through it goes down now by the power of the Holy Ghost Number five. The last ministry of the Holy Ghost is the revelational ministry. You need light to make progress. And that's what it comes to do in your life. To give you light. And there are three dimensions of revelation. Number one is to illuminate you. To lighten your world. Because the way we see. Listen. When you see, your eyes interpret the colors reflected by reason of the rays that fall on them. That means if there's no external light, even if you are not blind, you can't see. That's why if you are in a room, if the light is off, you are not blind, you cannot see. Because your eyes interpret the reflected ray from the refracted ray. When light falls on an object, the object emits that light. Is that light that your eyes, through the retina, into your brain, interprets? So the first thing the Holy Ghost does is that he brings light into your darkness. But it doesn't stop there. The second thing he now does is that he causes you to see what ordinary people cannot see. That's illumination. Because we are in this room now, we are not all seeing the same thing. All of you who are facing the altar, all you are seeing is the altar. If I step back like this, I'm seeing both the altar and the congregation and behind. So by reason of where I'm standing, 
I have an advantage. In the Holy Spirit, you are brought to a place where you have superior advantage. You can see everything that bore down your life in order for you to have a glorious destiny. So he comes to illuminate you. This is why Paul was preaching. And Paul said in Ephesians 1, 17 to 21 that he will grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that illumination activities can begin. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know the things freely given to you by God. The second thing he does in the revelational ministry is to show you the strategies for accessing your inheritance. You can have money in the bank and not access it. So it is by the spirit that you know the steps to take to access your inheritance. That's why he said that you may know that you may know number one, the hope of your calling. Number two, the exceeding riches of the inheritance of the saints in light. And number three, the exceeding greatness of his power that he wrought when he raised Jesus from the dead. And the third thing he does in his illumination ministry is to upgrade your existence. The more you see, the more upgraded you become. Even in the natural, it's so. Some of you, 10 years ago, you were in your village where you saw all the predominant mode of transportation were bicycles. And people carried hoe on their neck to farms. That's all you knew. So you could wake up in the morning and loaf around. You migrated to the city. You started seeing aeroplanes. You started seeing people go to work. You started seeing people do great things. You now discover that the way you dress was not good enough. You upgraded. So when you start seeing, you start upgrading. That's how life works. Some of you, you were in the company of people who spoke foul language until you came to a new territory where everybody spoke good English. Without anybody consulting with you, you went to brush up your language. Have you seen some of our brethren who go to, who go America, go to America and, and the UK? After one week, they come back and say, how you doing? That one is fake, but I mean, that's the pressure. That's the pressure of seeing. Hello, how you do? How many months have you been in America? I've been there for one week. Uh -uh, one week and your accent has been affected like this. <laughs> but don't blame them. When you see, you must upgrade. So what the Holy Ghost does in upgrading your life is to show you great and mighty things that you know not of. And the more you see them, the more you are upgraded. The more you are upgraded. And a time comes when your life almost becomes the standard for your generation. It's the job of the spirit. He upgrades us through the things he reveals to us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. These are the five major ministries of the Holy Ghost. What's the time? How many minutes do I have left? What a recap. It's a body. It's a body. <laughs> oh my God. And I also spoke about the symbols of the Holy Ghost. And I said the symbols of the Holy Ghost are not in themselves the Holy Spirit. However, they reflect his nature and his attributes. So when a symbol is used to define the Holy Ghost, it's talking to you about his nature. He's using that thing to define, to help you understand his nature and his attributes. So the Holy Ghost is not a dove. It defines the way the Holy Ghost moves. He descended like a dove. Speaking about gentility in his movement. The Holy Ghost is not oil. The oil speaks about the way he rubs off on a man. He permeates and percolates you. So he becomes one with you. The Holy Ghost is not fire. He spoke about, he speaks of the intensity with which he can act in operation the Holy Ghost is not water he speaks of his vastness so every symbol you see is not the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is a person but these things define his character his nature and his attributes and you'll find a lot of them in scriptures number one the Bible speaks of him as fire Matthew 3 11 Acts 2 3 Isaiah 4 verse 4 the Bible speaks of him as the finger of God. Luke 11:20, 20, Matthew 11:28. 28. 
The Bible speaks of him as the still small voice. First Kings 19 verse 11 to 13, Genesis 3 verse 8. The Bible speaks of him as the wind or the breath of God. Isaiah 40 verse 7, Acts 2 verse 2, John 3 8. The Bible speaks of him as his descent or his motion as a dove or the landing of a dove. Matthew 3 16, Luke 3 32. The Bible speaks of him in the likeness of oil. Psalm 133 verse 1 and 2, Luke 4 18, John 1 20 27. And the Bible speaks of him as a seal, the one that validates the operations of God. Ephesians 1 13, 4 30. You find a lot of it in scripture, but the understanding is he is not those things. Those things define his character, his nature, and his mode of operation. So when you see anything that defines that, it should give you an idea how the Holy Ghost operates so that it, you can relate with him better. If you come to a place and the Holy Ghost is operating like a dove, if you do anything otherwise, you have disaligned. That's why it's not every day you come to preach that you are charging. There are days where there are days when it comes like a dove calmly. That's how the people can be blessed. It's not every day you are praying and you are charging. There are days when it comes like a dove. You need to know that. And there are times when he spreads himself on the people like a flood. At that point, anything is possible. He can uproot anything. There are times when he sets people on fire. And you find everybody running like a mad person. You don't stand and say, what's going on with these people? Ah, they are not organized. Your organization will disalign you. You need to understand. That's why these things are used to define him. Because you can come for certain services. The Holy Ghost comes as a fire. A burning furnace. And those who know him are responding. You see other people who are learned or mature. They are, they are hypocrites. They don't know him. So we don't have a code, so to say. We yield to the move of the Spirit. They are generic operations. But every time the Holy Ghost moves, his operation is superior to our generic operations. That's why we discern him and we align to him. And this is what will make you an accurate and effective Christian. So the symbols were there to teach you his operations, teach you his character, and teach you his nature. This is what we dealt with as touching the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Now let's go to the doctrine of scriptures. We have 15 minutes. You know, these Bible studies, we don't have time to look at Bible. Our world is a fast-paced world, so we microwave everything. In the days of the apostles, they did Bible studies from morning to night and from night to midnight. If somebody falls, they will wake him up and continue. But in our generation, a, a serious Bible study is for one hour, 20 minutes. Ah, people are super saturated. That's why we need to go back to the cave where we can come for three days and we say we came to study the word of God. We teach from morning to night. You take break one hour, come back. We teach into the night, pray till morning and continue. There was a day I went to the school of medical science in Benue State, BSU. They were on break. The doctors were on break and they said, we've not heard the word of God for a long time. We want you to teach. I said, are you ready? They said, yes. I said, okay. I came around 10 and I stood. I spoke till 4 o'clock. When they stood up, they were stretching like pregnant women. It was like they, they were vomiting the word. They were choked. <laughs> I said, this is how you build capacity. Capacity. And if you don't have a place where they teach you the word like that, see, sometimes on Saturday, wake up 8 a.m., take your bath, sit down. Carry Psalms. Read from Psalm 1 to Psalm 150. Don't stop till 6 o'clock. When you finish, your head will be aching. But your spirit would have been saturated. If you do it for two months, your life will shift. You will shift. Even when you are sleeping, the world will now start talking to you. As you are reading, eh? there's a level you read to, you start praying in tongues. The life will hit you. 
That's how you will see. You know, real prayer comes from revelation. No, real prayer. Anybody who prays, who know the spirit of prayer, is revelation that takes you high. That's why when a man of prayer begins to pray, at every level, scriptures come. Scriptures come. It's those scriptures that move you. Quicken us, oh God, that we might call upon your name. When you are quickened, you call. When you are... Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.